everybody, I have a special request. This is a 30 minute session donated by a client to help Elon Musk. And I wanna thank this client so much. This is a really generous, kind gift. And it really emphasizes that the human race does care about the human race. And we do hear each other and we do have concerns for each other. And Elon Musk, you are someone who stands alone there's a lot of people who are doing great things for the world, but you're one name that we all have a familiarity with and you're doing great things to help humanity. And it's hard to be one of those people. So the request for healing for you, Elon, is related to the tweet that was shared four days ago. And I'm going to read the client goals. I'm going to be doing some psychic wisdom, some energy healing. <sighs> This is 30 minutes. This is a gift for you, Elon. And I'm going to address you, but we all get to collectively experience this and support you by just visualizing love and light and good things happening in your life. Because as you feel empowered, we all win. <laughs> and as I feel empowered, as they, we all, everybody, <laughs> as we all feel empowered, we all win, right? So we only gain from this. Okay, so the tweet is, if I die under mysterious circumstances, it's been nice knowing you. <laughs> I really understand. I actually do understand why, what would inspire someone like Elon Musk to say that. <laughs> I guarantee that when you're, you're trying to come out of the woodwork with extraordinary new inventions that are moving the human race in a different direction than where we've been going, for a very long time, there's going to be some vulnerability in the way that people are treating those ideas and those inventions, and there's new steps. There might not be everybody embracing it, right? And so if you are the one and only Elon Musk trying to do all of this, it's hard to say where the threat could be coming from. It could be coming from anywhere. It could even be coming from inside yourself. It's just a lot of responsibility right there. So you got to find the balance. This is what the client had shared with me. She says, Dear Abby, I'm very worried about Elon Musk after he recently tweeted that he could possibly be murdered. Elon is a personal hero of mine and a hero for mankind in general. I do not want to see anything bad happen to him. Will you please do whatever you can to identify any potential threats to his safety and possibly disarm them psychically. All right. There's so much that we can do with the power of our heart, power of our intention, the power of our spirit. Everything is energy. Whether we hear the sound of it or not, we can feel it. We might not even be able to pinpoint what we're picking up on is intuition, right? What's, what's that? What's that feeling I'm, I, I, I'm sensing right now? Nobody said anything, nobody's in the room, but yet you're picking up on something. And it could be hints, you know? It's like down the grapevine of many interactions and you're just getting a hunch beneath the surface of these exchanges. There could be something that's making me add up or calculate a feeling of concern. <laughs> Everything is vibration. So let's uh, understand why, where, what, as much as we can and help to neutralize and vibrationally create relaxation, calm, collectedness, groundedness, understanding, safety, security, and empowerment. All right. So Elon, you get to receive some psychic wisdom, some energy healing. And this is from a client. <sighs> All right. I'm going to relax now. What is, what is the most meaningful way that I can look into this, the tweet, the concerns of this client, Elon's situation, the bigger picture or the smaller picture, whichever direction is the most meaningful direction I can take to create something more beautiful in all of this. Hmm.
okay? The first thing I see is a red rose, okay? And I mean, it's not just looking at a red rose, it literally is examining the depth of detail. So not the whole rose is red, some of it is different variations of the color red. Some of it is a deeper red, darker, some of it's a softer red. And it has all these variations and hues of red. And I can see every individual petal. And I can see the stem as well. There's something dry about the rose, although it is fresh. It doesn't have any water. It doesn't have like droplets on it. And there's no water or mist in the air. It's just a simple red rose, okay? But it's not just a simple red rose. I mean, I guarantee you, you could find this red rose in any flower shop. But it's its own un individual, its own unique. It is the one and only of itself. You could say, well, there's one in a million red roses. There's millions of red roses. Here's one, here's one, here's one, here's one. They're all pretty much the same. But no, this is this one. This one. This is this red rose. I don't care if it looks like all the others. This, this one is this red rose. And this is the one that I have. I have this red rose. It's hard to deviate from the image. It's hard to deviate to see um, a bigger picture of what else is here. I feel like there's vulnerability of just seeing more, okay? And what am I looking at? Am I looking at Elon your energy field, something about you, something about the meaning of life, something about your soul. Am I looking at the tweet? Am I looking at the world today? What am I looking at? I don't know fully yet. I'm just shown this for starters. Okay, this is the next meaning. Holding this rose, because it is... <laughs> It is my red rose, it's beautiful, and why would I throw this in the trash? <laughs> why would I take this and I would throw it in the trash, or I would throw it on the, the ground and step on it and smash it? Why would I do that? Like, there's so much value to this. There's so much value to this. And why would I want to throw this away? It's not dead yet. <laughs> I mean, this is not dead yet. It's thriving and it's beautiful and it's it's worthy of being enjoyed and being valued, being seen, being loved for what it is. Can't it be loved? Yes. This is a real sensitive topic because you, you can't take this rose, which is in its prime, and throw it in the trash. You can't do that. And it's, it's like you could take someone, you could take a human being that's in their prime and then throw them away. You can't throw people away. You could take a human being that, that is in their old, older years, but they still value. You can't throw people away. You can't throw this rose away. Now, when it's completed its purpose, when the rose is dying, when it, it's, no, it, it's like it's served its purpose, it's, it's complete in its role. It's, it's no longer what it was because life has a process and it has stages and the rose is done. I, have, I don't want it anymore because I got to enjoy it while it was thriving and now it died and I'm okay letting it go. I'm letting it go back to the natural process. That's what you do. That's what you do. Still, this scene, meaningful, but there's something deeper. There's something beneath the surface here and it doesn't want to go beneath the surface of this. This is an easy conversation, actually. Oh, it has to do with the heart. You know, when things aren't working, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to just talk here to the deeper consciousness of you, Elon, and I just say, hey, it's safe. 
It's let's muck up the roses. Let's just muck them up. Like I'm starting to see like 50 of them. And we're going to step on them on purpose. Okay. These perfect are in their prime. They're useful, but we're going to take them. We're going to, we're going to do the things that we don't want to do. And we're just going to throw them on the ground and we're going to step on them and we're going to destroy them because sometimes we have to accept that it's not okay to do that. But then sometimes we have to do stuff like that. Sometimes we have to do things that aren't us. Like who in their right mind would do this? And so we're going to neutralize that sensation because, because truly the story of life is there are things that are totally, they, they, that's almost absurd. Why, why would anybody do that? And so if we live in a state of saying, why would anybody do that? Then we're, we're never going to move on. <laughs> we're never going to move past that. You know, so we need to do the thing that we don't want to do. And we need to accept it. And we need to step on all this. And we need to live with ourselves. It's like the person that's okay killing a butterfly and then laughing and saying it was just a stupid butterfly. It wasn't, actually, it wasn't. It was real to me and it's real to this world. And I'm sorry that you have a deranged view of this butterfly. And, but what you did was wrong. <laughs> and now you have to be the person that's going to kill the butterfly. So what does the butterfly represent? What does the flower represent? I'm not sure if it's on a bigger level or a smaller level. However, it's going to be um, a feeling of doing the thing that you would really not feel proud of doing, okay? <sighs> You have to be somebody you're not. And can you still be loved? Can you still love yourself? Can you live with yourself? Can you live in this world? <sighs> is it you that can't live with yourself? Or is it the world that can't live with you? Or is it both? Or maybe it's none of it. Or maybe it's some of it. We're going to have to let this go a little bit even more grimy, okay? All right. Let me see. Because... It's easy to stay at the surface with a nice flower and we just stay there, but that's that's not all that reality holds, okay? <laughs> reality holds the gross stuff. So we just reached the next layer of, I don't really like looking at this. I don't really want to participate in this. This isn't really me, but, but the only way to actually heal the vibration is, is to still know that you are loved, even for making decisions that you would never have made. Because these flowers are starting to look like people, okay? This is really impacting your heart. I mean, so ridiculously heavily. It's, it's almost like um, the brain buster moment where I don't have, I don't know. I, I like mind blown moment, but not in any conceivable way. It definitely doesn't feel like I want to celebrate. It makes me feel like I want to vomit. And I, I started to experience the echo of dead people, okay? And what I do is, you know, all right. <sighs> There's a lot of energy weight in the heart. This is breathable. No big deal, okay? Because we're going to work through this. <sighs> we're going to stand on the flowers. We're going to stand on the bodies, okay? And we're in kind of a broken city, and it's actually a beautiful blue sky. With some white clouds. And the air is poisonous. It's toxic. And it's is it the air, or is it the emotions? Is it... How can I live with my self sensation? How can I cope with this? How can I live with this? I 
I just keep saying there, there's no judgment here. <sighs> because vibrationally, that's what it says. The goal is to help you become stronger in who you are and not to, to fall and not be able to get back up again because you had an experience that was very new and unfamiliar to yourself as to who you are to yourself. And, oh man, this is disorienting to my brain. I feel like I'm gonna pass out. I'm working on bringing in fresh air for you to breathe, air that is coming from outside of this situation. But my guides say no, because we're going to have to let this, it's like, let, let the ball roll and it's rolling backward. <laughs> okay, so we're going to have to let the ball roll and it, it's rolling backward. It's kind of interesting. It's like if you play tennis and you put backspin on it, um, it messes with your head, you know? <laughs> so you got to be really prepared if either A, you're going to hit it with backspin or you're going to receive it with backspin. I mean, it's, it's a tricky um, way of playing tennis. And so there's something about backspin here that actually could um, actually have an interesting um, alternative turn or twist to it, okay? So the ball is rolling backward. Oh, I, I see. So now where the flowers lie, the roses, okay, there aren't dead bodies, it's your body, okay? And you never got that air, and it was all poisonous. <sighs> I mean, this is serious to you, this is real to you, so I have to listen to all the sounds of what this means, okay? Yes, okay, because we're going to go into, we're, we're going to have to go a little bit uh, further into the discomfort zone. We can't just pop out of it, everything's fine, woohoo, you know, <laughs> we're going to have to, it's going to hurt a little bit more, okay? Emotionally, in the sense of being human, in the sense of ethics and morals, um, in the sense of who am I, okay, it's going to feel like that, I'm going to feel the pain of that feels like wrong, like an injustice, or it's a wrong world, it's a, it's a bad world, it's a wronging world. <sighs> Still looking at you, and you're not alive, and you're resting on this bed of red roses in a broken city with toxic air, beautiful blue sky. I say, get up. You kind of like open one eye like, <laughs> I don't know, like you, you, you were presenting yourself in a certain way, but you were kind of playing possum in the scene. But you close that one eye and you just stay still and be still. Then you don't move because maybe you just don't want to. <laughs> maybe you just don't want to do anything else from here. Maybe this was the last straw. Maybe this is the last step and it's just lying down. I tell my guides he's not wanting to change. He's not wanting to get up. He's not wanting to move. He's... I mean, we can create a time room and just let you rest. I mean, maybe what you need more than anything is rest. I mean, maybe you desperately need to stop. Not because you're, go you're going to fall into death, but because you just need to stop. Because something in you is screaming. It's either, it's like, sometimes we just need to stop, okay? Because you don't need to, to wind up dead. And, and then the question is, who really put you there? And maybe it was your drive and your passion and too much stress and you not stopping. Maybe to collect yourself. Maybe to remember what life is about. 
and the mirror of who you are and the reflection of who you are in life, maybe too much sometimes builds up. We don't even know where we're at anymore. You still aren't moving. I mean, you're still not going to respond. You're not going to act like this. any of this is registering. And I will say this is impacting your third eye. This is impacting your heart. But it, it literally, it's, it's making my face really hot. I feel some heat in my neck, but I feel like heat in my heart. So these are kind of um, energy here in the face, energy here in the heart. And there, there's a lot of burdens that is just getting like built up inside. It's like a pantry that's stuffed with too much stuff. And it's a stress. And you don't give away too much here, actually, as to the, the most sincere expression of you. Although I feel like anybody can really see who you are because you, you are a sincere person. But there's something of, um, I, guess, I guess we always are somebody in the out, outer world and someone in our inner world, right? You're not wanting to open too much of the inner world. So I just let you lie there. However, I, I would prefer to put you into maybe a nicer environment than this broken city. I, I don't know why what, what comes to me next is to surround you with dogs. And I see a bunch of dogs of all different varieties, different breeds, big, small. And they just start coming from every corner of the city. And it's weird because some of them um, are peeing on you. <laughs> and some of them are kind of licking you. Some of them are looking around like they're not sure what they're supposed to be doing. But um, you're surrounded by dogs right now. <laughs> they aren't exactly asking you to pet them. They aren't exactly with direction. And they aren't exactly treating you right but you can't they're dogs and they're just behaving out of instinct another weird thing happens there's lots and lots and lots and lots and lots lots of bumblebees that appear i mean they just come from every direction and the bees become a blanket and they become a blanket upon you. And so you look like you're made out of bumblebees. And the dogs are still just standing around this sort of circular space with really tall, broken buildings. And I, I will say the city reminds me of what you could say is a new beginning. Because once things are broken, they then must be rebuilt. <laughs> and even if we were to turn our back and walk away... Something is going to come and change that landscape, whether it's human beings or nature. And so it will be repurposed. I ask you if you want to be repurposed. Maybe you are this representation of the city. You're really annoyed by me. Like, like stop trying to talk to you like stop standing here i'm just, just go away don't you see i'm lying here i'm dead i'm in the roses leave me alone i say i you know i'm called to help you and i'm called to figure this thing out this is what i'm called to see this is what i'm called to share and so i'm gonna take my time and i'm not going anywhere so i guess i'm gonna piss you off and i guess it's just they're just trying to help. Maybe you should let some genuine help in. Different kind of help. Maybe a weird, weird kind of help. This is really reaching your heart, but you, you really... You have a... There's some kind of dynamic... It wouldn't be the same language that we would speak, like, um, and how, how would I explain this? 
maybe it's a study or an exploration about um, how the heart makes us stronger or how the heart makes us weaker and how to find the right balance for you in relationship with how your heart beats, how the beat of your self-expression um, is released, okay? And because you could say that you, you, you defined it somewhere, you, you have a statement, you have a, a definable um, a definition to some unknown words of meaning, okay? related to the balance of your heart. I feel like there's so much further you can go with this. And it's okay to give in to the, the pure meaning of being a child that loves butterflies. Being, um, I, I mean, it doesn't matter. It's like I see a woman who loves flowers. I see even a kid who loves dogs. I, I see um, fishing by a stream. I see... These are these are memories. This is joy. This is real human joy. And there's nothing mechanical about this. This is it's like a car is exactly what it is. There's the engine. There's what it goes inside of it. Blah blah blah. Car. But what makes a human? What makes a child behave freely, intuitively? What makes a child love? What makes a child want to remember or not want to remember? What is the spirit of a human being? What is the spirit of you? What is the value of you is, is, is who you are in your heart. But maybe you... you you would be the value of you as who you are in action, in your actions and deeds. And you could say, yes, and also who you are in your heart, the, the feeling, the spirit of you. What I find interesting is, I, I don't, I don't feel, I feel it's, <sighs> I'm not being taken to a place where there is, like some kind of foul, um, really awful-minded um, people, inspirations, influences. They're, they're the worst of the worst of the worst. And they're sending all these bad thoughts to you. I, I'm not coming, um, I'm not being guided to that, okay? I'm being guided to what creates light and joy and love and a real human being with a real heart that beats and why people see something beautiful about you because, because people see who you are in your heart. Okay. I also feel like it's okay to, to just collapse and sleep. And if nobody saw you for five years, because you chose to take a vacation and you chose to just recalibrate and catch up with yourself again. Or just take a sidestep and do the, the backs, you know, the backswing or whatever on the tennis ball. Like, and it just things went backwards before they went forwards. I, th I think that would be okay, you know? I think that's okay. Because everybody has permission to say I need to find myself again or I need a reset button or I need to break or I need, you know. So I'm gonna do a couple things. So I'm gonna go to the flowers that you're lying on. I'm gonna be all these flowers and just see what they mean to me, okay? Well, red roses, what are they symbolic of? Oh. Uh, how do I want to explain this? They're, they're frail. They, they change in with time. Could be about aging. Because it has to do with capturing that, um, the rose in its prime. And it's just a sensation of the, the rose withers and dies. It's inevitable. 
and maybe trying to um, capture yourself in time like a photograph that never ages. And let, let's, I mean, this is just an idea, but let's say you have a, a brilliant things that you want to contribute to the world, but you're up against time and you're up against a human body. And the only way to ensure you can follow through with all of your visions um, is for you to find a solution to be able to um, prolong your life. So if you could take this red rose and allow it to stay alive for a billion years, um, how many years is it going to take for you to um, follow through with all your visions? And who are you going to become in that process? And, you know, what is going to be your relationship with those visions as you become something different that can withstand the test of time? I mean, it's hard to, it's hard to know everything. And if there's one thing... It, it, it's okay to, to have unfinished work. It's okay. You know, there's this, this Star Trek episode that kind of... I mean, I reflected on this for a while. And it's about the civilization where once they reach like 60 years old um, on their birthday... They celebrate with family and then they're put to sleep to death, okay? And then all the younger generations then take over their life's work. And this man, he he was on the cusp of, of extraordinary solutions that are gonna help their their race survive. And but he was losing his family, he was losing respect. He left the civilization and continue his work, but they were going to reject his work, even if he found the solutions, because he didn't honor um their, their structure, their rule book. I, I love I love this storyline because you could sit on all sides of that fence um, and see the value of everybody's decision. you know? It's a tough one. That's a tough that's a tough one. And he ends up deciding to let his work go and to die with his family as is their custom. And if they never find a solution, and they all die, do they die in stupidity because they held on to their tradition? Or is there a different meaning to life? That sometimes, sometimes it's, so, it's, it's okay to have unfinished work. Because I think to that man in Star Trek, it would have been much harder for him to let it go than it would, would have been to complete it. But he had to live with himself. It's another challenge. Hmm. That's what those roses mean to me, okay? I'm just going to stick around for a little bit. I'm going to see what these dogs represent. Oh, man. They are pain in the butts. They're annoying. They're stupid. They're rude. They're insolent. They're, they, like, seem to... Like, where are they coming from? They're coming from everywhere and they're all around me? Like, why are they here? Why won't they leave me alone? They're annoying. <laughs> and so I'm trying to figure out, is there something I can do? I plant a seed in each one of their heads and I show them a very pleasant face that is calling them for supper. <laughs> and it's like leading them to the edges of the city and they're, they're going to what is like their, their kibbles and bits for the rest of the night. Their doggy treats um, is more important than pestering you. They, they really, uh, not all of them leave, by the way. They're obsessed. This isn't healthy. They wouldn't, even if they were a fly and you shooed them away, it, it, it's almost like even if you were um, to get them with a fly swatter, they'd still be there. Like, they're just, they're just like the, the bad penny that keeps showing up. Like, they just, and they could be completely innocent. They just, I just kind of like that. I just don't know when to, to take a hint and go on and get <laughs> And just get, go on, get forever. Just just leave 
and never come back, please. Like, and I don't even want to say please because I'm sick of how rude you are. Like, you won't take a hint. Leave me alone. And now we're down to like two, three. There's not many left. And I'm not sure one of them is a man and... I guess he's kind of self-absorbed with um, brilliant ideas. And he's looking to the future in space. And he's kind of like a an odd, like, god figure. He even wears a priestly robe. He's, um... There's something of the charisma about him, but you're not into it. You don't see him for how other people might see him. You are doing your own thing. And he just doesn't ever buzz away. Because his ego is overinflated, and why wouldn't you be on board with him? Hello, he's this god figure. <laughs> he's like god incarnate as this like ingenious man, but he's got too much ego. He, he's not um, on the same page as you. Because you, you don't have the, the you're not self-absorbed like that. And you're not speaking, uh, it's almost like the way that he speaks is almost like a priest uh, mesmerizing the, these followers into, um, but, it, but it's more um, cult level communication. It's more um, planting seeds of a visionary kind and ingenious kind, but it's all, um, all words really and it sounds good and it, it is possible but for this man it's it's more the um his soul is like delighting in the people um people's souls following him he's more obsessed more into himself and having followers yes yes my ideas yes yes more you want my ideas you want me <laughs> he's like Ew. <laughs> but you, you, most people wouldn't, wouldn't, um, might not notice that. <laughs> he might not even notice it himself. But something doesn't vibrate um, to you about him. And he's one of these dogs, okay? That just won't leave. The reason why is because, um, hello, you should... You should be buddy-buddy with him. You should be on the same page. The things you could do, if you put your minds together, something's not right here. I'm going to just check really quick on these bumblebees, okay? I'd like to look at everything, but... Oh, they're protecting you. They're actually protecting you. It's interesting, because they all have their stingers, and it would would appear that if you made the wrong move, they would sting you, but they, they're actually um, shrouding you and keeping you in a warm blanket of their bodies and they're protecting you. Again, when I try to remove the bees and it exposes you, you just, you just want to be seen as not moving and not alive. You just want to not be, but you are alive. So a vacation, I think, would really help. I'm just going to snap my fingers and remove you from this place. Like, why are we still in the world of the broken buildings? Like, what's that mean? Ew, they're, they're gross. They're filthy. They're toxic. They stink. They, they smell like uh, burnt bodies. They... You can't leave this place for some reason. That's part of the problem. I have to take you out of this place. That's what I have to do. This is possible that a part of your soul just, just died here. Maybe something happened that just really um, was morally or ethically wrong to the depths of who you are. And you, a part of you died because of that. And it's staying here. No. <laughs> No, because you don't owe anything else to that event. You just for, you find the caliber of forgiveness and you, you uphold um, yourself. You keep upholding yourself no matter what. 
I reach my hand out and I say, take my hand and I and I will take you to heaven. Because this is a part of your soul that fragmented. You don't want to go to heaven. You feel like you want to stay here and suffer. It just sleep. And I say, let's go to heaven. If you don't like it, then you can go back. That's like a self-loathing thing. Not worth it. You're such a busy person and the roses and the meaning of the roses, you, you don't have time for this. <laughs> hmm. You're like, you're right, I don't. You stand up, all the bumblebees disappear, the dogs are still here, but you just leave this whole thing behind. It's a really gross energy. I would just leave the whole thing behind, go purify yourself in heaven and let this, the light of the spirit return to you. So that's what's happening. I see you going through just a bunch of light and it's all about refreshing fresh air. Um, rebalancing the spirit of who you are, rediscovering yourself. You should go do some fun things, things you really enjoy that are simple even, might even rem remind you of, of childhood. They rehabilitate you. They bring your balance to your heart. All right, that's all I can share. <sighs> See, that wasn't so hard. That was really interesting and it was beautiful. I think we all can understand this message. I think we all can feel impacted by it too. We all impact each other and we all can help each other. We can all learn from each other. Hmm. Thank you, Elon. Thank you to this client. Thank you to everybody watching. <sighs> Hope you all have a wonderful day.